for GateWorld.net. I'm Darren Sumner here with David Reed. We're talking with Mr. J.R. Bourne. Bourne? Bourne. Bourne. I got, got it right it first right, time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Martu from Stargate SG-1. Tell us uh, how you originally came about to be cast in this role back in season two. Uh, hey, come on now. Look at you, Cliff Simon, the evil dude over there. I'm glad we found the quiet we're, room. We're, we're, we're. Uh, uh, I was uh, originally auditioned for, uh, God, I forget the guy's name now, but another character, the evil one in that first one that we Kordesh. did. Mm, Kordesh. Kordesh, that's right. I was auditioned for Kordesh originally. And uh, I believe Rick sort of looked at the tapes and said, no, 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 no I think that's our good guy. I think he's, uh, he should be Marty. And it was being directed by uh, um, a fellow that I had just previously worked with and played a kind of evil character, so I think that's how he would see me. But Rick, uh, I, I believe it was Rick's suggestion to cast as Marty, so, hmm. yeah. Martuf received some great character development for an occasional guest role, especially through his relationship with Samantha Carter, with the loss of Jolinar. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about those two years on the show from seasons two to four, when you look back at them now? Uh, you know, it, it, I never, ever expected uh, you know, any of this and the longevity of it to, to have. It's just, uh, it's, um, it's pretty amazing. And still to this day, you know, when I have other projects come out, it seems to be Stargate is the thing that I'm most recognized for and people most still all this time afterwards. And um, it was a blast. I've made friends that, you know, are still in my life mm -hmm. today. And uh, uh -huh. it just overall on and off in the industry and outside of the industry, it's a great experience. Mm -hmm. Is there any one particular episode or scene, day on set that really sticks out in your mind as that was just a great time? Yeah, all the days on, uh, on the set have to, <laughs> they, they kind of stick out in my mind. but. Uh, I think when we went to hell, that that episode, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what was it? The, the the devil you know. The and devil you know. Memories. That's right, and Jolano's memories. I think those two were were among my favorites. You know, because we went on the on the on the, the spaceship and, and and you know jettisoned down to the planet, and and uh, and I wasn't in the uh, the Tokra outfit. Mm -hmm. That's really one of my favorite things to put on. I, I much prefer it to be in the SG outfit. Mm -hmm. It's so rare that we see the characters kind of on their downtime, like an example for Jolinar's memories before their mission. Yeah. Was it a different atmosphere preparing for that? Was it was it more comfortable to be able to sit down with them in an off-duty atmosphere recording these scenes? Yeah, you know, it, it, it definitely had a... Uh, um, I, I, I mean, you know, sp specifically speaking about the costume, I was never comfortable in that, in that, that in that tripe and that outfit, and so you know, just being out of it was more comfortable, and uh, and the feeling of you know, all kind of sitting around, and uh, it, it did have a bit of a different feeling. You know, I never really thought of it, but it it, it did. Um, I don't know if I felt more like a part of the team because I was dressed like everybody, <laughs> you know. But uh, it was definitely uh, it was definitely fun, and to come back and do ripple effects was yes. a, was a highlight as well. Mm -hmm. Again, be you know in the SG outfit, yeah. We'll talk about it. First, walk us through your experience on uh, Divide and Conquer, Martuve's mm -hmm. fatal episode from season four, from the day that you first received that script. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Peter called me beforehand to sort of give me a heads up that this is what was happening. And, uh, and uh, you know, again, at that time, I didn't know that there was any kind of following. I, d I didn't really know that Marty was even a character that was sort of sticking out to the fans. So uh, I wasn't surprised. I just was like, okay, you know, it's uh -huh. been a lot of fun, and so be it. And I knew uh -huh. he'd have to die eventually, and, and this is the episode to do it. And so, and, and I loved the way it was, you know, it was beautifully, you know, there was this... Uh, you know, real sort of respect at the end and the way that it was shot. Peter did such a nice job. and. Um, you know, everybody having to kind of try to take a shot at me, and it finally being a man of very sort of meaningful and significant and, and, and sad, and, um, and then that beautiful kind of, you know, uh, 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 um, you know, camera shot pulling uh -huh. out and looking at everybody standing around. It was, uh, it was nice. It was real nice. Sad, but, um, uh -huh. you know, still nice to do. Uh -huh. If it can be nice to do a death scene. <laughs> Did you feel that it was premature at all for this character, that he still had a lot of ground to cover? Uh, you know, again, I, I, I was sort of expecting it, you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't expecting this to go on or to have this kind of a, a, an interest like that we found out after he died. 
and then I sort of, you know, came to the head about every, you know, there being this sort of following after him. The question has come up since, uh, what would I have done if I'd stayed along, if I'd stayed on longer, and mm -hmm. what did I miss? And, you know, and looking back now, sure, I would have loved to have developed um, the relationship between Martouf and Lantash. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the relationship between Sam's a given that would have been definitely a, 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 a fun one to to delve into. But I think that relationship between Marty and, and Lantash uh, would have been a fun one to kind of get into the headspace and the the real sort of um, um, difference of personalities between those two. You know. Mm -hmm. The writers of SG-1 hope to bring you back uh, in mid-season five. Can you tell us a little bit about the story that, that never came to be? Yeah, I was off uh, in Montreal uh, shooting a movie called The Favorite Game. And it was, uh, it was, um, it was like a, uh, about a two-month shoot, and we were out for five weeks prior for rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So once I got into Montreal and we started the process of the rehearsals and then into shooting the movie between Montreal and New York, you know, it was a big movie for me, and it was a, 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 um, a substantial part and a substantial role and character and all of that. So I kind of got there and got straight into the headspace, mm -hmm. and it just didn't work with scheduling to be able to come back and, and, and do, unfortunately, it was just like, oh, are you kidding? The timing, yeah, which was too bad. Mm. So after far too many years of waiting, Stargate fans finally got to see Martuf again in Ripple Effect. Yeah. Had you been hoping that the right story would come along where you would get to revisit this character? You know, I always trusted that the story would be right. I always trusted that, you know, when and if it ever came back, uh, uh, you know, the opportunity, that the story would be there. These guys are great. They know what they're doing. It's like there was never a doubt that it would be something, you know, that I wouldn't want to do. It was always just about scheduling. You mm -hmm. know, th these guys... Um, they all are like family. John Smith, I think, is one of the, you know, I just uh, adore them all. So it was always just a matter of scheduling for me. You know, I would mm -hmm. jump right back on board um, at the drop of a dime. So, and this was a fun one, you know, to have so many and to know that, you know, uh, in that parallel universe, Amanda and I, Sam and, and Marty were together for a couple of years, and, you know, he's a part of the SG team and all mm -hmm. of that. So, you know, it was great. It was very exciting. So many of them, too, you know. Tons of Sam's, tons <laughs> of them. It was just, yeah, it was great. It was great fun. Was it uh, being back on set there, is, is the new cast, was it a different experience with the new cast? Uh, no, Bo, you know, I, I, I really didn't have much with Bo, uh, Bo Bridges. He seems like a wonderful man, great guy to work with, but um, I didn't really experience much of that. Um, you know, Chris and Michael, they, they have their, 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 uh, their sort of, uh, you know, their presence, it's well established. Mm -hmm. And so you can't really kind of, uh, you know, and they're both friends of mine off, off of the show as well. So it was, uh, it was nice, it was fun. You know, I miss Terrell, obviously. Um, and was, But she was there with you. She was, what am I saying, of course. Yeah. But, but not, you know, in that sort of capacity of Dr. Frazier. And she'd been, she was Dr. Frazier, obviously, but not in that capacity of like the old cast, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, uh, it didn't have that different of a vibe. Peter was directing it as well, so it was kind of just like slipped right back into it. Hmm. You know? Tell us a little bit about uh, your working relationship with Amanda Tapping. You, uh, as actors, have a lot of chemistry, certainly, and the characters have a lot of chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that was an easy one right off the bat. Uh, <clears throat> as soon as we met, you know, in that first episode, we just clicked, and, uh, um, you know, I had just gone through the... Uh, uh, you know, rather sort of um, big loss in my life, and, and you know, she was willing to sort of share that with me and off the set, which then just transferred beautifully, you know, uh, behind, you know, in front of the camera. Mm. So there was just an immediate kind of click between us, and it was, uh, yeah, and the rest just kind of, you know what I mean? It just happens every once in a while. Yeah. You Wonderful. had started the, the Tokra part one, and had never met her before. Mm -hmm, right. And that first scene that you guys do, you have to have this huge romantic yeah. undertone. Yeah. Was that uncomfortable? Uh, Amanda kept farting throughout that whole scene. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I kept farting throughout that whole scene. No. Um, Chris kept farting throughout that whole scene. <laughs> that, that, and that's true. No, uh, um, you know what? That's, that's what we do. I mean, that happens. It's like, yeah. 
you know, uh, y y you walk on the set to shoot a movie with somebody for a month and it's with someone who's been your wife for seven years and you've got two kids with and you have to immediately find that connection somewhere, whether it's the eyes remind you of somebody that is in your life or whatever it is, but you just sort of make that immediate connection as active. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes it comes easier than other times. Well, as you said, we learned in Ripple Effect that Martooth and Samantha had finally had a romantic relationship yeah. in a parallel reality. Yeah. Uh, is this something you wish you could have explored more in our universe before Martooth's death? Uh, Sam's attitude always seemed to be, I really like you, but I'm not ready yet. I know. Not off of set, though. No. no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have definitely been a fun one to explore, most definitely. Yeah, uh, that would have been a... Um, Definitely one of the, um, you know, aspects of the character that I would love to delve into is what, the, what is that relationship and, and are, are, are her memories hers or are her feelings or are they all in ours and what's that, let's figure this out and let's really get into it because my feelings were, I felt always was sort of going beyond what my feelings were for Jalinar and they were for this new person that was just, you know, seemed to um, hold all the same kind of characteristics that were in Jalinar, you know what I mean? Mm. I loved her for her. That's so sweet. Do you have uh, any other projects that fans can be looking for? Uh, I have uh, a movie coming out this year called Everything's Gone Green and another one yes. I'm shooting right now called Sisters, which will probably come out the end of the year, I suppose, yeah. We'll be looking for them. Thanks, guys.